A disturbing piece was published in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry. It is a study that claims that people who are anti-government or believe in conspiracies around the government are suffering from a condition called anti-government phobia, meaning that anyone who has a distaste for the government, the way it operates, its policies, and believes that there is a particular force behind it must be mentally ill. The implications here are frightening. If you feel the government is doing something that will harm you, and that is part of a bigger plan, you are sick. Thus, the government can respond as though you were a threat. This is what the study actually claims. This study conclusively demonstrates that unfounded fear of government is a recognizable mental illness closely related to paranoid schizophrenia. Anti-government phobia differs from most mental illnesses, however, in that it is highly infectious and has an acute onset. Symptoms include extreme suspiciousness, conspiracy mongering, delusional thought patterns, staunch us-against-them mentality, withdrawal from reality, and often religious fanaticism. The problem here is how do you define unfounded fear? What constitutes something as being unfounded? Is the belief that the government is doing things we don't know about unfounded? Or seeing that it puts forward policies that reduce the health care and education unfounded? Or is thinking the government lies in order to justify war unfounded? What is un unfounded is whatever the government says it is. It's one of those vague definitions that can be used to cover anything, like the definition of a terrorist right now. The blanketing statement is the us against them mentality, as it is the cornerstone of every conflict. This can be interpreted in almost an infinite number of ways. This will cover any criticism you have of the government. The study also gave a suggestion on how to deal with someone who is considered to have anti-government phobia. Having the patient committed to a qualified mental health institution is the best option for family and loved ones. For this reason, all psychiatrists and family physicians should be provided with educational materials which will help them recognize the various symptoms and warning signs accompanying onset. In other words, the plan is to have you quarantined from the rest of the public and have you discredited by having been held in a psychiatric hospital. The stigma that is placed against mental illness is sufficient to discredit anyone who shows any discontent with the government. It's an extremely effective manner in which to silence dissent from anything the government says is the official truth or official line. Because as I said before, what is defined as truth is defined by the government. In addition, by having you committed, your family, even your family will have turned on you, leading to a greater level of being discredited. People can say, oh look, even his family thinks he's crazy. The study is aware of the growing discontent people have towards the government. Anti-government phobia has a worldwide distribution, but has particularly high incidence in the United States. Infection rates are estimated by mental health officials to be about 5% of the general population, and this rate is growing at an alarming rate. Rates are highest, but not limited to, those who are disaffected in some fashion, especially those who have a strong personal grudge against the federal government for one reason or another. It should not be unexpected that people are growing more disaffected with the government, particularly if they didn't vote for the person or policies in power. To imply in this way that anyone who disagrees is a problem implies that you are not allowed to. This statement alone is a support of fascism. If people are unhappy with the policies being put forth by the government, they not only have a right, but a duty to say something about it. There's a widespread disaffection with the government right now, from all sides of the political spectrum. Whether you believe in the New World Order, a socialist, you're a Ron Paul follower, or a religious oath keeper type, you know the government is not being honest with you. That is not some kind of bias. We all see something is wrong. We all have different interpretations of what the problem is, but we all acknowledge there is one. The harder the government pushes against the will of the people, the more disaffected people are going to become. The study even hints at a suggestion of shutting down any media that promotes dissension from the government. It promotes it as being a source of the mental illness. It spreads the disease, it claims. Common ways in which this harmful anti-government propaganda is spread include books, pamphlets, magazines, newspapers, audio tapes, videotapes, shortwave and conventional radio programs, computer bulletin boards, and various internet sites. Upon exposure to patriotic propaganda, the patient mysteriously begins to imagine hidden links between unrelated current events, 
weaving those gross distortions of reality into a complex delusional web, a labyrinth of conspiracy theories with all imagined clues leading straight to the federal government. This mysterious malady progresses until the patient invariably assumes a staunch us-against-them mentality. Fortunately, anti-government phobia is non-genetic and thus wholly preventable. From an individual standpoint, the most effective prevention policy is obviously not to allow oneself to become indoctrinated by a self-styled patriot, preferably by staying as far away from any potentially divisive propaganda. As an added precaution, one should try and rely exclusively on well-known and reputable sources for news and other information. This clearly is a signal in support of shutting down any media that doesn't agree with the line given by the government. It attempts to show that once ideas enter a person's mind, they become infected, meaning ideas are the most dangerous thing they have to stop. Learning is the key to undoing the ignorance they push on us from the mainstream media or official channels of information. Very telling is the line, upon exposure to patriotic propaganda, the patient mysteriously begins to imagine hidden links between unrelated current events. What exactly is unlinked? Is there a correlation between the events of 9-11 and the invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan? Is there no link between the world's oil reserves and oil profits to the invasion of Iraq and coming Iran? It sounds like investigation into why government takes the actions they do is becoming forbidden and that you're mentally ill if you do. The study also specifically lists certain people to be targeted by doctors. It uses words like believing that the Federal Reserve is not in fact a part of the federal government. In that case, Ron Paul should be locked up immediately and branded as mentally ill right away. It also lists other type of people to be targeted. Uh, delusions may involve the United Nations or concentration camps or the Council on Foreign Relations and delusions involving takeovers by foreign military troops or jackbooted government stormtroopers dressed in all black or New World Order and people labeled as patriots. The implications here are clear. Challenges to the official story put forward by the government will be taken as a mental illness. The freedom of speech of every American is in jeopardy. The tactic is devious. They can't shut you up without violating the Constitution, but they can lock you up for being supposedly sick. I am of the opinion that more so-called studies like this will begin appearing as the government is forced to resort to more and more fascist measures to control the population. But, according to them, that would mean I have a phobia.